Hi everybody, welcome back to Las Vegas. We're here in the Sugar Cane at the Emerald Lounge. Mongo gave us an in-kind contribution. It's been fantastic. We've been talking to customers all day. We had Dave Itchicheria on earlier. John Furrier is upstairs in the third floor doing interviews with a bunch of AWS execs and customers and partners. Wall-to-wall -wall content live out of the Palo Alto studio. Check out SuperCloud 5. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with two good friends of theCUBE. Sarvjeet Johal is the principal and founder of StackPain and a member of the Cube Collective, and Andy Chirai, my good friend from uh, just down the street in Marlboro, comes to the studio. Not enough, you should come to the studio more. Andy Chirai, Vice President of Constellation Research, AI expert, you know by the Chirai AI is his last name, so he's got that locked up. Gents, good to see you, thanks so much. It's been a good week. Great and, to see you. And, and we're not even you. on hump day. I know. know. We're not even halfway yet, right? So, um, for the information uh, overload already, man, that's so wait, much. Wait, say it again? Information overload yeah, already. Well, it's always like that here, right? They just fire hose us. All right, let's start with the keynote. Um, they hit us right away with storage. Yep. Yes. I was like, oh. That's <laughs> where it started. Storage, okay. I guess there's logic to that, right? 2006, yeah. started with S3. With S3, simple yeah, storage. Yeah, simple storage service, and then it's, uh, it's not simple anymore. So many tiers, so many um, policy-based you know, consumption of uh, storage. But this storage actually, what was told to us during the analyst uh, sort of presentation was well, there are some um, caveats to the fastest storage. It's uh, one single region. They're it's confined not, to an AZ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we're talking about a new service, right? So, yeah, that's yeah. the thing about object storage, it's supposed to be global. Globally yes, distributed, not. but this isn't. So, but this it's, isn't. But it's yeah. fast, it's high performance yes. object, yeah. so that's cool. I, I, fast object's been around for a while. I mean, Pure announced it you know, years ago, and yeah. others did too, Dell has it, but you know, that's the way AWS rolls. You know, they, they have, their business model is the killer model, right? Yes. So, but I was, I was like, come on, give me the AI, give me the juice, and it finally came. They got into right? it. Right, it finally yes. came, Andy. You must, well, must have been like asleep for the first 20 <laughs> minutes. Well, yeah, so I was a little surprised, but uh, on the storage thing, right, the Express One, what, what people don't realize is that, you know, they, are, uh, they won the cheap storage war a while ago. Now they are making it faster, right? I mean, it's they, the claim, if it holds true, 10 times faster and about half cheaper. So if you had to use that, particularly because storage is becoming a major issue for all the AI ML programs, and by providing this, I think they're going to win that. Plus on top of it, talking about AI ML, there are, look, the, the infrastructure war is over. Way long ago, cloud war is over. But the AI ML stack war is still on, all right? And that's where the, your open AIs and Googles are coming from a different side of things. And AWS, you and I talked about it multiple times. They go at it from a different angle. I'll give you all the building blocks that you want to build, and they established it one more time, saying that, you know what? I will let you choose the model you want, the storage you want, the data lake you want, whatever you want, and I'll let you build the best possible model or fine tune what you want. And they are staying to their core message, even now. And then, of course, we had Graviton 4. That was a big shocker. Yeah. <laughs> we all, we <laughs> all knew it was coming. It was coming. You know, uh, and we know the, that five is coming, to, six is coming. <laughs> right, right. And so they're finally on this kind of cadence. Yeah. You know, my question there is, I know you guys aren't, I mean, maybe you're not really semiconductor, deep semiconductor guys. I'm not really either, but I've talked to some. The question I have is, so Amazon was first with the custom silicon. Yeah. I mean, you and I have had some interesting conversations about ARM yeah. and the ARM standard. You, Crawford, and I did that one, one session together. The question I have is, is, is the fact that it's ARM and ARM is so standardized and you can, you can give the standard, you know, the custom design to TSM and they can manufacture it in very high volume with high confidence, does that give Microsoft a, an ability to compress the cycle or is this a situation where there is no compression algorithm for experience? I don't know, I don't know if you guys have an opinion, but but there really is an emphasis on the silicon. That was a that was a big deal. Yeah. First layer of the stack, the three it, three layers, stack pane. Yeah. Three, <laughs> three layers. <laughs> yes. Right? So it's yeah. an infrastructure it's for AI. It's the LLMs and it's the apps. Right? Apps, yeah. So they have different flavors of the three tiers, and depending on who you talk to at Amazon. Yes, I think there's a compression there of the experience because the whole industry is learning. So Microsoft has learned from it. As well as there's like lack of experience will play into, so they they will gain uh, 
so it, they're not like a eight years behind or four, five years behind, let's say, let's say five years behind they started, like five years, but they're maybe two years behind. Yeah. So that's where, that's how I see it. So Amazon's, whatever, five, let's call it a five year lead gets compressed to two compressed years. To two maybe, Still yeah. have a lead, yeah. great. So, so what about the integration? They made a big deal about this, Andy, in the integration with Anthropic as one example and the silicon. And of course they have their own models, you know, Titan, the hallway talk on Titan is uh, like it's really not there yet, right? So that's part of the reason why I said, oh, you're going to have optionality, so you can't fix it, feature it. But what's your take on the LLM strategy generally and then specifically what you heard today? The, the funny thing is both uh, Matt Wood and as well as Solipsky, they made comments saying that you can't predict which model is going to win, all right? You'll never know. And then and they also are of the opinion, or at least trying to play the game, that you know, for each of that, the model need would be different. You may not land up using one LLM suits all, which is a story from OpenAI and story from even Google to an extent, right? But they are taking a different hour saying that, you know what, one model, there's no one size fits all model, I want you to train your own model. And that's why I asked them a specific question about, you know, are you going to turn your Titan into the, the mega LLM that is going to solve everything? They're like, no, we don't want to do that. We want to custom train to an extent that will solve certain problems. And then we also want to be, I mean, if you look at the collection, I looked at the, the Bedrock models, I also had the demo AI lab that I talked to the guys who built it. The collection, what they have between Anthropic and, and, and their own models, and then uh, even Llamas there, and then they have AI21 labs there, Hugging Face models. Pretty much they want to become the model playground for everything. And then they have this party rock that they let you build the models, build the apps using that and figure out what fits you, and then we will help you fine tune that model. And remember, he was also talking about the fact that we'll help you fine tune it fairly easily, there's a low code, no code way to fine tune it, and then you can have your own instance. That's totally opposite story of what the other guys are telling. We will give you the entire model, you use it as you see fit, and Amazon is more like, no, no, we'll give you all the models, you choose what works for you, and then we'll help you fine tune it, and we'll help you rag it, and then we will run it for you. So how important Get is it that you, that you have your own large language model? I mean, Google obviously with Vertex AI, Microsoft and OpenAI, uh, you know, notwithstanding the meltdown the other day, Amazon, IBM, do you have to be best of breed if you're a big cloud company, or is open source ultimately going to solve, open source and other proprietary models going to take care of it? I think for training the large language models, like it takes a lot of money. Not only money, a lot of like, you know, leadership and then a lot of skills, right? So not everybody can do it. It's a scale business, number one. Number two, it's like a money business, right? So um, only few companies will do that and there's no point in training another, you know, another, um, sort of uh, LLM, which does the same thing with what, we, what we already have. So you're saying Amazon doesn't need to be like a, a best of breed LLM? Like, yeah. Does Titan need to be best of breed? No, I don't think so. Amazon is not in that game. Yeah, Google is, you know, Google is a B2C company. Facebook is, right? And, and um, why a proxy OpenAI is for Microsoft. But Microsoft, even Microsoft didn't need the, like okay, how do I write a point for me? You know, like you don't do that you know, at work. So they can still make money yes. selling other people's well, LLMs so because they're yeah, selling I, the infrastructure I that, underneath. I think infrastructure is key for Amazon and not only infrastructure but platform. There was a lot of there was a lot of Q and A around the chips and like um, I was in that session where I asked the question like, hey, how much of your own managed services have been moved to Graviton and your own chips, you know, including the non-Graviton chips, right? They say we are almost there. There are some chips which are sort of abstracted from the customer because everything is like a managed services, an API call, but some are not. So they explained it pretty well. So I think this, the differentiation in, in a nutshell is the that from chips, the economics of running big, huge uh, number of data centers, I think that's where the economics comes from. On top of that is the platforms, like how the, the software stack, if you will in between the consumers and the infrastructure. I think I, Amazon made a good strong case that they're, they're the leading infrastructure player, to your point, Andy. So, but yeah, so, so. But what about the, the, the AI? What about Q? What about the LLMs? 
Well, so again, yeah. they are on point with their method, right? Because I don't, I'm not going to get into the LLM war, let others figure it out. And they're going the other way, like you know, Databricks is doing the same thing by acquiring the Mosaic ML, and there are companies that are allowing you to build the LLMs. So there is more money involved in building LLMs. Imagine this, if your company want to either build a smaller digital LLMs or the large LLMs that to satisfy your needs with your own fine instance, and where are you going to go? Amazon has become a one-stop shop for that. And, and the funny interesting thing was uh, Salipsky when he was on stage, he was talking about the fact that he, he can build the, the 20,000 cluster GPUs. That's actually, imagine the power of that, that's supercomputer level. And then he brings in Jensen yeah. on stage, and he says, yeah. we have a 19,000 cluster on your own DJX cloud. I'm like, you know, I'm like, that's, that's a funny thing that he brought in that they were talking about yeah. against each other. What'd you think about the Jensen interaction? He uh, stole the show, man. Yeah, yeah. He, stole he the always show. does. He always well, but does. We saw, we've seen Jensen, somebody joked, we, I saw Jensen more than I see my kids this year. Right, because he's at every show. He was at Dell, he was at Snowflake, <laughs> he was at HPE. It, it think, serves man. them, it serves them well, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the, on the queue, I think it's a clever approach. We, we, we were talking for the last few weeks, like, hey, hey, we, only Microsoft, just one vendor, has so many, um, you know, like agents for developers, agents for like, they call it co-pilot, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, co-pilot's everywhere. Co-pilot's everywhere, right? So how many you need? So you need one where on the back end it will sprinkle the, it will get the right agent for you. So you have one co-pilot, but it will have the agents on the back, plugged in into the back. Not only from Amazon in this case, but also from third parties. So they, okay, they so showed what's, the Okay, so what's the large language model behind Q? Do we know? No, they didn't, they didn't tell gotta us that. Gotta be Titan. Yeah, it's not Titan, they said. Did they it, said it's not Titan? No, no, it, they say Titan that? is one of the models which can, it can go to. It is a facility. But what they build a, it on? It's a facility, it's not, okay. It's okay. You can, it's You're going to tell me all of the above? It's not, you know, it's not. There's like, got to be one that they started with, though. Well, that's the point, right? What's you don't the primary? Need to know. What's the primary we one? We don't need to know? Yeah, that's their, that's yeah, their messaging. Is, is there not a primary? Well, I know that's their messaging. I'm asking, you know, let's unpack that. I don't know, is, they don't discuss that. Is there such thing as a primary? I think I mean, so, right? I, there is, right? Yeah. My, is, is it possible it's Titan? I think primary is Titan. And if yeah. it is Titan, then it's maybe got some work to do. Yes. Oh, it's, good. <laughs> I mean, on, on that note, I think. I mean, it's a good demo. I, I think AWS has bought time from the market by promising a lot. They have promised a lot, actually, yeah. today. And, well, and, and OpenAI firing Sam Altman. And that whole drama bought them some time too, don't you? I think? was going to actually funny, funny. I was going to ask a funny question, but the session ended. I say, OpenAI's all workforce. Like Satya was a, a, saying, like I can hire all of you. Will you hire um, uh, anthropic people <laughs> if something happens there? <laughs> like uh, my question was around talent. Actually, it's a very legit question. Like, where is the talent coming from? Where is the research coming from? Because the research is the key part. The, the best. Uh, the best data scientists, the best people who are doing Gen AI, they're paid you know, five to 10 million a year, right? And Microsoft, not Microsoft, AWS is known for being frugal. So my question was that, and which I asked to like walk and talk, and they say, yeah, we, we, we have the best talent, they said, but I, another, another thing I challenge AWS on is that you always say, like we work backwards from like, what customers want. I said in AI, you can't work backwards, you have to lead, right? So you've made that point too, but you're also bringing up another interesting point uh, on Anthropic. Does AWS have a board seat for Anthropic? No, no I, don't, I don't think so, but now they will after seeing well, but so what then happened. They're going to go through a full, I would think, they would go through a full body scan of Anthropic from yeah. a governance standpoint, yes. so that they don't get caught off guard like Microsoft did. Yeah, but again, they don't, Look, Microsoft made all their bet with the open AI, and that's why they want to be very careful that they don't want to make a bet in one company. They are making multiple bets, if you look at it. They, they even bet on AI21 as well, and they're bringing Hugging Face into play yeah, with them. Microsoft's so. got, you know, they, they no, they they're, they're, they're positioning that Microsoft is, is locked into open AI, which they are, I understand that, but how hard is it to do other LLMs? Microsoft's, they did that. They're doing Llama 2. Yeah. They're going to do other LLMs. I don't think, to me, that is not the right like it's sustainable, like messaging. There's messaging 
that is sustainable is where we, it took them an hour to get there, but it's like privacy, trust. You, if you're using our Q, our co-pilot, you, it will be trusted. We build that in. He, he finally made that point very strongly. Yeah. But it took an hour and 15 minutes. I, I, I think, I think, I mean. I would have led with that. I would have led right there, smacked you, it right in the face. I think the guardrail is the program that they released <laughs> on that behalf as well. Yeah, I mean. I, uh, and then the, there's a data discovery and then the data governance program, they have that as well. So there are, there are elements in there, but it's. I mean, I get the emotional 2006 S3, but to me, that, they just buried the no, lead. No, they shouldn't have started with that. I think they should have started. But it was a good, by the way, it was Adam's by far his, his best keynote. Yeah, you know, he, he tried, but, but he paused a couple of times yeah. because the slide was not up and he... he yeah, but he was know. good, he, yeah. was, he was good. I mean, oh, I thought well. the Jensen interaction was a little <laughs> awkward, <laughs> like shake, hug, you know? Because you know, Jensen... It's hard to match him. Well, it's funny, I know, he's such a big personality, but it's also, Jensen has such strong relationships with a lot of the technical people, yeah. the technical <laughs> CEOs over the years, and he's known them for decades, whereas, you know, yeah. I don't think that he and Adam have that, that history. Yes. So, but Jensen, John called him a chameleon. He was a Dell talking about laptop AI. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's just, where, whatever you need. I'm an arms dealer, here we go. Hand it out. All but right, but, but I, I, I don't think he was looking at a prompt or anything. He was just doing it from here. No, yeah, he knows so his good. stuff inside out. He's yeah. so strong. I any other any other key takeaways? I mean, we hit Q, <laughs> the AI stack. Uh, some of the other stuff I think is still NDA, so we can't talk about it. I thought the Pfizer gal was really strong. I thought yeah. that was a really good, yeah, uh, good customer yes. testimonial. Um, and the other thing is, you know, they, he he did start with industries. It was ironic to me because. You know, he started with financial services, the industry that was the last to go to the cloud. Financial services, healthcare, he led with those two, automotive, he brought in telco later, he had tech, obviously, with Salesforce and SAP. So, uh, I mean, go ahead please, sorry. Uh, there are two things that came out which we didn't talk about. One is that uh, they were talking about this called the easy to capacity overflow. So one of the issues a lot of these companies have, when you're trying to train the models, when you're trying to do things, you're always worried about the availability of GPUs because they're in such a demand that they're not able to get it on demand or even reserve. So this particular option, what it'll do for them is that you could schedule for days, months, or weeks ahead saying that, okay, that's the capacity I'm going to need because I'm going to do something big. I reserve it, guaranteed it's available to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's one I thought was pretty interesting. What, what was the other one? The other one is obviously they're going after the data lakes with their Express One, right? So basically, they are trying to help you with a zero ETL yeah. on, the, on the Express One combination, cheaper data. So if I'm Databricks or Snowflakes on stuff, I'd be a little worried. I don't know, I, I mean, yes. They're, they're, they're copying Databricks and Snowflake yet again. But I, 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 they, to me, still have a metadata problem. The metadata's locked into different, the two pizza teams have created Metadata has its own data store, and Glue has its own uh, uh, metadata data store. Uh, 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 data zones, you yeah. know, really has, you know, it, does, it only has uh, a business metadata. It doesn't have operational and technical metadata in there. So they've got these, the stovepipes that they got to deal with. They have to make data zones into some kind of abstraction so that the co-pilots can interact with, with the, the knowledge graph, if you will, and take action with confidence. Right. And they're, I think they're quite a ways away from that, to be honest. I, Microsoft is too. I think there's a yeah. lot of slideware in there, but that's the North Star. And I think both Databricks and Snowflake, they're, are, they're a little bit ahead. They're, they, what they showed yeah. at their, 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 their events was also you know, ahead of the time. You have to do that these days. But I do think those two companies are more focused and they're ahead of the game. I think they have, they have threatened some of the existing players like which are built on top of them a little bit, but not like they won't topple them. Yeah. That's as you said. The other thing is that clever thing they did was uh, on technical side was that in, in this, when you are doing SQL for analytics, you can send like w the metadata about economics. Like I want, I can wait for this query to run later give me like you know smaller GPU CPUs so like that was very clever yeah. I think that's the industry first so that's like one their thing. storage tiering which yeah. again so is, it's, it, it, I mean it's, it, it's 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 not an uncommon industry trend it's just AWS adopts it and it goes into their awesome estate yeah. and their business model so it becomes so attractive because they get half a million and customers the, and the last uh, observation I have is that I think that they needed to do a lot of myth busting 
And they have a lot of what? myth busting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, they are weak in GPU, they don't have a good yeah, relationship yeah, 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 with yeah. NVIDIA. I think that they did that myth busting. But wait, didn't they initially shun DGX Cloud? Didn't they initially say no, no? And now they're embracing it after Microsoft announced it? Yes. I mean, that, yes, that out, of, me, out of necessity. Right, so I think that was a missed opportunity. They should have been first yeah. to embrace DGX Cloud, because that was inevitable. Right. And I think they were initially like, no, we want to we want to own that. And then and then when Microsoft announced they had to have Jensen here and they had to announce. So then Jensen came close you know, to them because Microsoft was doing their chip. Oh, I will go hug the bigger the guy. bottom line is Jensen wins yes. again. Anyways. You know. All right guys, we got to no go. Thank you that. so much for spending Thank some time you. with <laughs> us on theCUBE. Hey, keep it right there with SuperCloud 5. We're pumping in content live from our Palo Alto studio. John and I are here in Las Vegas with Shelly Kramer and uh, George Gilbert's also here. We got Rob and Rebecca, they're asleep by now in Barcelona. Keep it right there, more action from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm.